three points has got you're gone your way in the West London derby, but did you have to dig in at the end there? Concentration levels must have been through the roof. Yeah, of course. Uh, following a good side, we knew it weren't always going to be easy. So to get a three points after a difficult result, delighted. Welcome back to football, Ben. Nice to be back. Yeah, uh, been a while, so yeah, just happy to be back. Um, obviously, a big win. You know, like Cole said, after the uh, the result the other night, it's very important that we bounce back with a win. Um, and hopefully that can now give us momentum going into the second leg of the, uh, the Carabao Cup. Certainly did. A penalty again for you. Look, you did miss a couple of chances midweek, but coming into this one today, had you just managed to put that at the back of your mind and you knew exactly what you had to do? Yeah, of course. After the game, I was disappointed. Like anyone's going to be missing that many chances and it will have been costing the team the game. But it's one of them games, you know, people know you have them games, so just to try and put it behind me, come out tonight, well, this morning and... Yeah, score. Never in doubt, was it the penalty today? No, never in doubt. Like you said, OK, he missed a few chances, but, you know, we know the quality he's got and all the top players missed chances and the fact he come back today, he took the pressure on for the penalty, won us the game and, yeah, we don't expect anything less from him. So, yeah, it was top. Look, Ben, now you are back amongst it. How do you want to influence this Chelsea side to help them keep going moving forward? I think, you know, we were a very, uh, very young team. Um, I think we just need a bit more, you know, leadership. Um, personally, I want to try and take on that role. So, um, yeah, I think trying to help the team out in that respect. Obviously, energy, getting forward when I can, but, uh, you know, defensively being solid. And, yeah, it's a very, very talented squad. So, um, you know, we're going to get there and hopefully it can, the, uh, the flick can switch soon. A lot of people look to you to get these goals. Do you enjoy that pressure and that responsibility? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, well, just try and help the team every game, you know what I mean? If it's assist, goal. So, yeah, that's what I try and do. And it's my job as one of the forwards to, yeah, help the team. All right, guys, thank you very much. Well done this afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. Joe and Peter alongside me. And we're joined now by Raheem Sterling. Thanks for coming out to talk to us, Raheem. Congratulations as well. It, it got a bit edgy at the end of that game, but how pleased are the team with the overall performance and the way you got it over the line? Yeah, it was a, a difficult game. Um, got the, the, the first goal and then we tried to get the second. We didn't manage to get the second. And, you know what the Premier League's like. Um, teams will push you the last um, 10 minutes if you don't, um, if you don't um, <laughs> get that crucial second goal. And that's what they've done. But, you know, we defended well and, and got the three points in the end. Made the difference again, Raheem. I think that makes you the leading pen penalty. Am I right? The penalty... One more penalties one than more anyone, penalties in, Premier than anyone in Premier League history. One more? So, yeah. It's a nice stat yeah, to have. Yeah, that. 26, apparently. Yeah, yeah Crouchy's usually well. the stats man. But, yeah. <laughs> but look, it wasn't nervy at the end. But the first 15, 20 minutes, I think, the way we moved the ball, like we, we, we meant business and, and that's, that's the Chelsea, that's the level this team's got to be consistently throughout games. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, that's definitely the level we have to get to and I think, you know, it's um, boys that are, are gaining experience, um, you know, and a big club like Chelsea, you know, I feel if we don't get the first goal in the 15, sometimes, you know, we can try to overdo it or we can try to... We just need to keep patient and, you know, we've we done that, got the goal in the end, but we need to, to keep building on, on results like these and, and get better. Right, you talk about the, the young boys. Obviously, there's players come over from, from different countries. A lot of players sign, like players like yourself with a lot of Premier League experience. I heard Ben Chilwell talking about himself trying to be a leader. Is that something that you, you take on yourself now? Yeah, there's, I think there's trying to be an, be an influence to people and, and doing too much. So I feel like in match days, you, you know, you can, you can try and help people talk in but not overdo it. Um, and I think mm. the crucial thing, especially, again, I keep saying a football club like Chelsea, um, the boys have to understand what the, the fans demand here and um, not getting too much into the noise of the stadium and trying to play our game, what the manager set us up for us to do. And just keep going with that and the goals will, will, will come and, and, and keep flowing. You obviously know Cole from Manchester City. He said that you're a role model for him. How have you helped him settle in? Yeah, Cole's um, someone that know, I know very well, someone with a lot of ability. And, you know, I, I understand, you know, if a team's going to do well, you've got to have a, a front line that are scoring goals and have a good connection together. And any anything I could do to help Cole in that position, I tried to do, you know, and he's done a great, great penalty today and, and got us the three points in the end, and that's what we... You obviously know his ability and the potential. You would have seen that before. But have you even been a bit surprised by just how big an impact he's had here? Nah, not, not at all, actually, because I know how... I know him from my city days and exactly what you see is exactly what I've seen in training. And I think there's a lot more... Um, with that patience, he, he continues. Mm. You, you must love playing for him because he's got that lovely way to pass, isn't he? For somebody like yourself, you can 
who can run off the shoulder of people. You, you must love playing with him. Yeah, he's someone that gets in great positions and he said he can time a pass or he can, he can go inside and shoot as well. So it's a great addition for sure. In the programme today, Maurizio Pochettino was talking about putting the smiles on, on the fans' faces again after the, the setback in the week against Middlesbrough. How confident are you now with, with the confidence-boosting win that you can go and turn that around? Yeah, a lot of people probably look at this win and say it's a 1-0 win. We could, you know, do more. But I think the more um, wins we can, you know, get together as a group and mm. um, build on, I think that's when, you know, you'll start seeing... Uh, a little bit more confidence coming out from the boys and and and, and getting into our, our, our real rhythm. And that's what we need. We need to keep, keep building, have the fans behind us and, and keep going. And you've got 10 days be, before the second leg of that. What are the, the plans and the priorities? Yeah, the plans now is um, rest and, you know, closer to that. I look forward to that and come back here and, and get the win and, and hopefully get to a final. Thanks for coming out and, and chatting to us, Raheem. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank well you done on the win. Well done. Mm -hmm. Brilliant today. Thank well you. Done. Do I leave this? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Crouchy, sound man. Yeah, not a problem. All <laughs> sorts. All, all Top working. broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's interesting hearing uh, his take on, on yeah. Cole Palmer, and he hasn't been surprised at all. He, yeah. he saw that potential, and, and this is just what he expected. Yeah, I think when you do your own work on a, on a player, like when Cole Palmer signed, I, I, I spoke to a few people I know at Manchester City, because we've seen him, but we haven't seen a lot of him. You know, he's obviously come to a big club like Chelsea. He come from a big club, but everyone you know who's worked with him has just spoke glowingly about his ability and his quality and what he can bring. And I watched him I watched him for the first 15 minutes and he brought the ball out of the sky in, in the game you played in, dropped a shoulder, went past someone, and, and I just thought, you know, like certain things that players can do, he's just got that natural ability and he just brings he brings the crowd with him. He's just been an outstanding footballer. Mm. Is he a shoe in for the England squad for you, Peter? Um, you'd believe so, yeah. If I'm picking the squad, he's in it 100%. I think he gives you that little bit, little bit extra. Um, even the penalties as well. Let's mm. be honest. You know, when yeah, it yeah, comes, yeah. comes to the penalty, he's got that swagger about him. You just know he's going to step up and he's going to, he's going to put it away. And I think it, that's the way he plays with the freedom, with the confidence that um, you know belies his age. As mm. I said before, it's uh, he's a, he's a really is a joy to watch. Yeah, do you know talking about England, Lynn Crouch is right. Like sometimes you pick character above um, talent with England because playing for England is, a, is another level it's another step up but it, listen his talent is, is top drawer anyway but he's got the right character to play for England because he'll go out there in a, in a World Cup game or a European Championship game and he'll go and get yeah. on the board there'll be no hiding he you know, takes he responsibility takes responsibility like you said the, 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 the brilliant thing today was how well he responded from missing the chances against Middlesbrough you know you know that's that's the football now you, you play in a, a League Cup game you miss some chances, everyone watches, everyone's talking, social media, bang, bang, bang. Come out here today, first 15 minutes, best player on the pitch. And he was the difference maker. Him and Raheem Sterling, again, I think like, I like them two coming in off the, off the wing. So, uh, just, yeah, he's just, just an outstanding player, an outstanding character as well. And he's, uh, he's thrown his name in for the Ballon d'Or as well, so yeah, he's got yeah, short yeah, confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why, why, not? Not? why it, not? Do you think the potential is that high? Um, I, listen, we don't know. I mean, you've got to it, love his confidence. It, no, I think I, well, I think you can tell by the way he plays football that he's a confident lad. Obviously, saying comments like that. I mean, listen, he's aiming high, but he has the ability to do it. And I think he's at a club now, like at City. I'm, I'm not going to say he would have got lost, but he's with so many kind of players that are at the top of the game. I think here. You know, people are looking to even you know more senior players now are looking mm. to get him the ball and make make things happen, and it's uh, it's a credit to him. Do you yeah. think Sterling? What about his form? Do you think there's any way he breaks back into the England squad? Yeah, I could see. Of course, How, you know we can't. Raheem hasn't played for England for a while, you know, for various reasons. But a player like Raheem, again, like Cole Palmer, you know, he's got the character to play for England. Forget. What do you think those reasons are? You just, listen, we don't know. We're, 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 we're media, we're journalists. I don't know what the reasons are behind it. But, you know, it certainly it can't be just performances on the pitch because he's performed consistently over, like Crouchy said, for the last 10 years, 12 years in the Premier League, however long he's been there. He's been one of the top performers for Liverpool, Manchester City, now Chelsea, three massive clubs. So, listen, Gareth Southgate got an abundance of players in that area of the pitch. You know, that's that's obviously one of the reasons, you know, but... For me, Raheem Sterling will be in, in, in and around an England squad and, and a team all day long, you know, with, with the quality he's got. Welcome back. Things are looking up for Chelsea. They're above uh, Man United and Newcastle in the table now in eighth after beating Fulham 1-0. Cole Palmer with a penalty just before half-time, the only goal of the game. Let's hear from Maurizio Pochettino now with Becky Ives.
Tio, well done. Three points in a West London derby. Did you like what you saw from your side today? I think, uh, yes, different momentum during the game. I think the first half was really tough. Uh, second half, I think we played really, really well the first 30 minutes and we built our victory. And I think we fully deserve on the end. We were better side than, than Fulham and I think so pleased, so pleased because of the victory and because we needed the three points. Marco Silva is talking about the challenge that Malagusto put in on Willian. He's fairly convinced it should have been a red card. What's your opinion on that? Can you understand why he would say that? Of course, I understand and I respect his opinion. Um, yes, I think it was a challenge. It was a difficult challenge for the referees and the VAR. I don't know if they check or not, but I think uh, yeah, we, we already suffered some uh, send-off uh, red card for some action like this. Uh, but yes, okay, I'm not going to say nothing. I accept that maybe he uh, understand that maybe it was a red card. But I, I cannot uh, you know, to say too much because I, I didn't see uh, with all the angles and, and, the, and the camera yet. Um, yeah, but look, that is football sometimes it's for you and sometimes it's against you. Well, Cole Palmer was the difference between the two sides. Were you pleased for him today? Because he did miss a couple of chances midweek, but it didn't seem to affect his performance or his confidence at all. Yeah, because I seen uh, we believe in him, and even when when no score, like it happened, three big chances against Middlesbrough. Always, we are going to give the support because we believe in him and that have the quality to to play. Um, yes, I seen. It's important for the young guys like like him is to feel the support from the coaching staff and the and the club and the teammate and and of course it's it's they are young uh, they are I think like uh, Colwell is the first uh, season that they play consistently every week and this type of you know up and down can happen uh, the most important is to believe and to translate the confidence and the you know and the belief on on them and and make them to play again the job done and do you think you deserve the win why no classic match <laughs> what means that well just that it, it didn't really get going it was a bit stop start and and things like that well that is the premier league uh, we watch all the games some some games like this always happen it was a really tough game uh, i think uh, Overall, I think we, we deserve the victory. We were better side and I think uh, very pleased with the performance and, uh, of, the, of the team. Uh, yeah, so happy because of the three point, we needed the three point and now it's, I think, our four victory here uh, in a row in Stafford Bridge, third in, uh, in the Premier League and I think it's important to build this, this confidence and this run. Did you get the response you were hoping for after the disappointment at Middlesbrough? Uh, the disappointment was that we didn't win, but the performance was good. Uh, it's normal. Uh, the team was good. Uh, I told you in the press conference yesterday that uh, I was sure that the team is going to compete again. Very good side, like uh, is uh, Fulham, because we need to give credit to Fulham because they beat uh, Arsenal. It was difficult with Liverpool and different games. And we saw that it's a very good team and big, big credit also to our, our player because I think the performance today is, is very good. Well, Maurizio Pochettino, happy overall today. Cole Palmer with all the plaudits as usual again for, for Chelsea with the only goal. One player, though, perhaps not in get, getting the plaudits he deserves is Petrovic in, in goal, Joel. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's a good sign he's not getting the plaudits because what that means, Linz, is that with goalkeepers, you want them making the saves that they, they're supposed to make being a calming influence. You don't want these goalkeepers that one, you know, five minutes, they're tipping it round the bar, doing the old the, the camera saves and things like that, and then they're making mistakes. He's just a good, steady hand, a good young goalkeeper. He's coming from the MLS. People might not have known a lot about him, but he's had a big reputation over there. He played a lot of football for a young man, young goalkeeper, sorry. And I, I think he's one of them, you, you, in like six months' time, all of a sudden he'd have had 20, 30 games under his belt, and you think, oh, 
he, he's, he's not put a foot wrong. He's, he's, he looks got, he looks calm, doesn't he, Craig? He's really assured. Yeah, like you say, he, he was catching the ball instead of punching it. Sometimes you know he was taking the pressure off his mm. his defence. He was he was vocal. He made a you know a couple of good saves. Um, yeah, he looks like a, the answer. He really does because uh, they've they've struggled for mm. for goalkeepers in in recent mm. years. Sanchez, we hear, is making good progress. Do you think he keeps his place when when he's fit? He's got a decision to make. It's a big manager. one, isn't it? It's a big big decision. You know, and, and, and Crouchy's right, we've, we've not quite nailed it. You know, we, you know this club of, you know, Carlo Cudicini, Petr Cech, Courtois, like top, top goalkeepers. And then, you know, we, we, we rotated, we changed, we mixed and matched. You know, and, and this, this lad, 24 years of age, the manager's got a big decision to make. He's got, and, and, and it's similar to the Arteta decision in a certain degree, but this is forced on Pochettino because of an injury, like, you know, he, I don't like the idea of rotating goalkeepers. I like to have a number one. Okay, Marco, you didn't give up that fight right to the very end. Couldn't quite find a way through. But what's your thoughts after that? Uh, derby, um, as you expected, a lot of chain, challenge every time. Um, the referee started the game um, in the way normally he likes to, to ref as well, um, giving the game to let the game going and. Uh, um, I believe that uh, a derby should be should be in that in that way really. Um, Chelsea started better than us. Uh, the game we haven't started really really well. After the f first 15 minutes, we started to balance a little bit more the game. They had their moments. We had our moments as well. A little bit more ball for them. Um, apart from the first 15 20 minutes, I think we we started to create some problems. Very good chance from Harry probably to 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 start leading the score. I um, would say from the the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, after came the um, the penalty that gave them the chance to, to be leading the score at half time. Before that, of course, we have to talk about the red card. That has to be red card clear for, for Gusto. Um, difficult to understand the, how the things are not consistent at the level that we all um, are. Premier League is Premier League, and uh, um, probably in, in 10 moments like that, one nine so far is being red card. Um, this afternoon wasn't red card in, in William, is a clear dangerous tackle and put the and the player in um, in trouble in that in, in that situation for me is clear red card the VAR checked and for this time they didn't give uh, second half we tried to react uh, some chances for for Chelsea is true we had our chances uh, as well of course the game more broken more space for them to um, to explore the the quality the the pace of the, the attacking players um, even so, um, Fulham football players, they fought until the end, big, big fight after the, the last uh, Wednesday match, so, so intense for us, another one and uh, nothing to say about the players, they gave everything, um, worse for our fans as well, the, the support was impressive again, uh, away from home, he's being always like, like that, OK, nothing to say because they fought until the end, OK, we lost the game, we have to go again. Have you had any sort of explanation? Have you managed to speak to any official as to why it wasn't ready? Just for the for, for the official, I, I haven't spoken um, for him. Um, of course, I don't want to say what he, he said to me, but he, he has the same opinion than myself. But it's not for him. It was for the VAR. That moment is a clear v, VAR um, decision. Um, doesn't matter the the, um, the opinion of the for the official or the other people that. Um, so the images at, at, at half time is, is a moment to decide, is a moment for the, 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 the VAR to decide. Of course, Tony Taylor in that moment decided the yellow card is a, is a normal decision from the referee. I really believe um, should come the, the, the help from the, the VAR. And again, in, in 10 moments so far this season, this type of tackles, nine um, is being red card. This afternoon wasn't. Is it frustrating to you for push another top team again, but still not come away with the result? Yes, of course, it's a, it's a difficult one to take. It's a frustration for us, a disappointing result for us. We want to, always to fight for something different. And we, we fought. Uh, we fought uh, again. Um, different halves, um, the way we, we took more risks second half and you know the game more open. First half slightly different. Um, the moment that came the penalty, the game was really balanced in that situation, not really one team on, on the front foot. They had some chances, of course, the quality of the attack line. Um, they are Chelsea, but we, we did really well as well in some moments. So it is, but nothing to say. You fought. At the end, uh, the individual quality and uh, um, some decisions from the situation, the, the VR decision, uh, made a huge impact in the game. Marco, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time.
His side fought till the end, but Marco Silva felt that Marlo Gusto not being sent off in the first off had a massive impact on that game. He said it was a dangerous tackle, Joe, a, a clear red card that put Willian in trouble. I what did you think? I can understand his grievance. Grievous. We've seen them given as red cards. You know, listen, like Crouchy said, he's just gone over it and he, he's, he's mm. not gone to do him, but he's, he's got it wrong. I can understand why he's upset, but it was a, it was one of them 50-50 ones. And, and there's, there's no there's no absolute in decisions like that. It's going to be left. It was left to the ref's discretion. The ref was right on there. He didn't he, he didn't think it was malicious. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. And the VAR obviously looked at it, but they felt that it was it was more of a reckless follow through, more on the foot than the ankle. But but Marco Silva saying the majority of the time he thinks that is given as a red. Yeah, I, th I think it's one of those ones. The referee gives a red card. I don't think VAR overturned that. Um, you know, he gave a yellow, and, uh, you know, they didn't overturn that. So I think whatever the referee's decision was in that, in that, in that case, um, I didn't think it was, it was strong enough. You, mm. well, we've been there loads of times, I've, I've certainly been there, where you've yeah. overrun the ball <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you, you try and make up for that. Um, and he's, he's tried to get a toe on the ball and, and then gone over the top. I don't think he's meant to do him. I don't think it was intentional, yeah. um, but he has caught him pretty high up. So in a word, yellow or red? No, no. Yellow for me. I've always the correct decision. Yellow, yeah. yeah. But do you know what he's right in what he's saying? He said when it's left to the ref's discretion, he's in the mix of it all. He knows if there's been a bit of needle between the players, he would have heard it. You know, so them decisions which go to VAR when it's like, is it, is it on the foot or on the shin? They're on the borderline. Mm. But I think it's always best to go back to the referee because he referees these players every week. He knows if Gusto's a you know, nasty player. He knows if there's a little bit of needle. All these little things. He's, he sees the velocity live. Mm. So I think them ones, I feel for Marco Silva, but I, I like it better when the ref makes the decision on, on what he feels like in the game. What positives does he take then? They've got a 10-day break now before the second leg of that semi-final. A chance to get to Wembley. What, what are the positives that you can focus I, on I think, during I think it's that? Been positive. I, I think they were slightly disappointing today. I'm not going to sit here and dress it up. I think they could have. It could have been more on the front foot. I thought Chelsea controlled the game in the certainly in the early periods. They had they made some decent chances, but it wasn't until the last 10 minutes that they really put Chelsea under mm. pressure. And this is, you know, Stamford Bridge is a nervous place at the moment. They're not quite sure where they are as a football club. Um, and, and to, to kind of let them get away with, with only putting the real pressure on the last sort of five or ten minutes, I thought I was just slightly disappointed by, by it. Bridge, though, Chelsea 1-0 up against Fulham. Joe Cole and Peter Crouch watching with me. The goal came just before the break as mm. well. Joe, it, it came from the penalty spot as well. Raheem Sterling taken down by Issa Diop. Can there be any arguments about the decision? No, 100% a penalty, Lindsay. It was, it was a bit of quality in the final third, which, which was lacking. Cole Parker <laughs> drifting. So this is a lovely ball, that. That's the quality it brings. Raheem sits him down. Diop goes in. He's, he's very rash. You see it from this angle better. He dives in. Once you go to ground, he catches Raheem. He feels the touch. And, and down he goes, and it was a clear penalty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Cole, Cole Palmer just needs to get on the ball. He's fantastic when he gets on it, and he's a lovely reverse pass. And Raheem Stern is really cute. He plays it really well. It's a definite penalty, and uh, Cole Palmer takes it very, very well. Yeah, five out of five from the spot for him, just 21. He's got so much maturity and confidence for his age. Yeah, like I said before, Linz, at the start of the show, I think that we should be looking to build a team around him because he's got that character, he gets on it, and he's got that composure in the final third. And Fulham's best chance, Peter, in the half came when Wilson got on the end of that Robinson cross. Yeah, it was, yeah. And I think uh, if you had that feeling, didn't you, that Chelsea had so much possession of the ball, you felt that Fulham still had chances, though. And you thought he might come. Obviously, it took the penalty. But that's something that we, you have to watch. Palmer, obviously, William getting away from Palmer. Lovely ball from Robinson. And uh, it was a great save, I have to say. And, and what last five to ten years not make that save? And then this, it changes the game, so that's a good save. And let's have a quick look before the break at that Melo Gusto yellow card as well for, mm. for that foul on, on Willian. Right decision in the end? Yes, Linz, for me, but I've seen them given. I've seen him go to the screens and give a red card. You know, and he, he did this in Aston Villa earlier on in the seasons, and, and it can be perceived as reckless. So I'm glad he didn't get sent off for obvious reasons, but it could have done crap. Yeah, it's one of those where you give the ball away and you try and make up for that. And I, I, I don't think he's going in to intentionally hurt, but he's, he's going to poke the ball away and, and, and with his foot. But like you say, he could, could have been given as a it red. It changes the game if he does get a red. Yeah, yeah I felt it was more of a, a reckless follow-through, mm. more on the foot than the ankle. So just a yellow for that one. Chelsea 1-0 up then. Welcome back. Half-time at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea leading Fulham uh, by a goal to nil. That goal coming in first half injury time uh, from the penalty spot. So let's get straight to it, Sean. Was it a penalty for you? Yes.
definitely, definitely a penalty. I think the pass from Palmer is excellent to start with, the little reverse cube pass, but Sterling's lining him up, but he just slows him down. And it's a terrible challenge from the defender. Yeah. It's a deal. Yeah, crazy, crazy challenge. I mean, he's a yard and a half away from the ball. Um, really good play from Raheem, but terrible defending. And he gives the referee no choice, really, but to point to the spot. Yeah, it feels like ever since he's arrived at Sanford Bridge, we're talking about Cole Palmer almost on a weekly basis. And from 12 yards, proving lethal. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he loves these big pressure moments, it seems, especially since he's gone to Chelsea. He steps up and takes control of things at such a young age and he, he dispatches that one perfectly. Yeah, and that is his ninth Premier League goal of the season, which is a terrific start for him um, in terms of life at Stamford Bridge. Um, there was a moment of, of real controversy in that first half. This might have divided opinion here in the studio. Uh, possible red card for Chelsea's uh, Malo Gusto. Um, <clears throat> for this challenge on Willian. Sean, what did you think? When I first saw it, I thought it was, uh, it seemed nasty, but when I saw this view, for me, I, I, the way I've seen cards being given for similar things and they've ended up a red, I would have said, because of those, that's a red card as well. Well, he, he got given one for something very similar, maybe even less than that, uh, Aston Villa, I Aston think Villa, it was, yeah. wasn't it? Not, uh, not so long ago. Um, and that's the consistency that drives people mad at times. We'll have a look at that Villa incident in a second, but let's talk to Dermot Gallagher, former Premier League referee at the Match Centre. Uh, Dermot, always good to see you. Um, was it right in the end, that, that challenge warranting only a yellow card? I thought it was a yellow card, Manish. I think he's, he's low enough. Um, he doesn't come at a great distance, so he doesn't gather the speed and intensity. But what I would say, it's an on-field decision, and I much prefer that. Anthony Taylor's made the decision. I think it's one of them when you see it, the VAR is always going to side with the referee there. But Derm, I get that part, but I mean, <laughs> surely they can see, like, he, if his foot doesn't go back, he most probably breaks his ankle there. It's only because he, with his foot being planted, as soon as that contact's mad, William, William kind of moves his foot backwards. But if his foot's planted, mm. he most probably breaks his ankle there. So I don't see how they've not looked at that or at least ask the ref to look at it. And then if the ref decides, I'm going to stay with the yellow card, fair enough. But I still think he should have had a second glance at that. Well, they have looked at it, Sean. There's no doubt about that. You know, I heard the VAR. Um, he's obviously looked at it. He feels it's not one to refer up to the referee to go to the screen again. He's got to be convinced that it's a clear and obvious error by the referee. I think the referee's made a decision on the field and VAR looks at it. I can't see the VAR upgrading it for the referee to go and have a look. And I think... Uh, all right, actually, before we get to the opinion... Unlucky. Very unlucky, Alan, honestly. I would take that as that it's very different, then. You yeah. don't agree with what? If you look at the point of contact, there's not a huge deal of difference between the two, or, or would you disagree with that, Dermot? Uh, I don't, but I think he's very, very unlucky to be set up against Aston Villa. Oh, right, I think okay. on another day, you know, a yellow card and nobody would have really been arguing. The yeah. thing is, because we've got the two instances with the same player in different matches, that's why we compare. OK. okay. Interesting. Dermot, thanks very much Thank indeed. Uh, former Premier League referee Dermot Gallagher. So as things stand, Chelsea still have the 11 men.